All right, so look, back in the day, the founding fathers who set up this whole American thing were split on how to pick a president. Some wanted the president chosen by popular vote. The others wanted to let Congress pick a president. As a compromise, they blended the two ideas together and came up with the Electoral College. But how does it actually work? See, in every state, a party selects a group of electors to represent them if their candidate wins. To become president, a candidate needs 270 electoral votes, slightly over half of the 538 electors. We can usually tell who won the night of the election, but it's not official until about six weeks later in December. The electors all get together at their state's capital and they do the actual voting. A month after that, on January 6th, the vice president opens the ballots before a joint session of Congress. The votes are counted and the winner is officially announced. Four times in history, the candidate who won the popular vote lost the election. In 1876, Samuel J. Tilden bested opponent Rutherford B. Hayes by 250,000 ballots. But Hayes squeaked by in the Electoral College, winning the presidency by one electoral vote. Most recently, in 2000, Vice President Al Gore won the popular vote by half a million. The election came down to the state of Florida. We all know what happens in Florida. Remember dangling chads and all that? After a long recount, Gore lost in the state by just a few hundred votes. That gave Florida and the election to his opponent, George W. Bush.